Today, we're gonna to give you some tips for challenging midday light shooting. My name is Lisa Langell, and this is Sprague Limbaugh, and Hi. this is Photography on the Wild Side. We're sponsored by Parkwood Studios and Photographers Adventure Club. So welcome, Sprague. How are you? Oh, thanks, Lisa. I'm doing great. It's fun to be here with you. It's fun to be here with yeah, you. The, the, the ultimate wildlife photographer. You know? oh, well, the ultimate travel photographer. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why I brought you in today is, you know, with travel and nature photography, a lot of times I know many of the people that I work with and that take my classes are telling me about the different tours that they go. And they say, you know, I would love to have a dedicated nature photography tour but my husband, or maybe it's my wife that wants to go with, you know, she's not so much into nature. She likes more of the city things. We're planning this trip. What do we do? How do I shoot? So that's one of the aspects I want to talk with you about. And then we'll talk about some tips today on how to maximize, you know, those middle of the day hours right, that exactly. frustrate photographers. So Right. And when you're on tour, it's particularly important because they never get you up at the uh, golden hour most times. So you get to shoot between 8 and about 3 and, you know, 3.30 in the afternoon. Unless exactly you're right. with a, uh, a dedicated uh, tour where they're, you know, keeping you later. So that's exactly you know, it's right. very challenging. And, and even in dedicated tours, you know, I teach one in Alaska and I'll be doing mm. one in Newfoundland this summer. There's a whole lot of midday light when you're near the uh, Arctic Circle. So you have a really long magic window, you know, magic hour, which is mm. maybe like four or five hours, but you have 12 or 15 hours of this incredibly bright daylight. So shooting something interesting during those hours can be really a challenge. And I wanted to talk about that today to give people some inspiring tips for doing so. So what do you usually do? You know, you travel all over the world. You're an airline pilot. You right. go everywhere. So what are some of the things that you look for? Because you are stuck in short windows of time in these wonderful locations. You've got to maximize what you do without much time on hand. Well, that's exactly right. And, and when I'm flying, a lot of times we get places late at night. And so sometimes you go out and you shoot in the dark. Mm -hmm. So it helps to have a tripod. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, um, you know, midday is where we seem to, you know, be out just wandering around cityscapes and the like. And uh, then, of course, when I'm traveling on my own, um, uh, part of my problem is I think it has to do with the attitude of the photographer. And my yeah. attitude is if it happens before noon, I don't want to go. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like to sleep in. So yeah, I catch yeah. the golden hour and kind of the midday type of yeah. uh, light mostly. Pick one golden hour or the other and then maximize the, what you're doing during the day. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to put some pictures up because I think they're going to give people some interesting ideas of how to shoot. But, you know, typically as a wildlife photographer or any photographer, we love natural light outside the morning and the evening. That's not always possible. So some things that I like to help people think about is how you can use the light that's in front of you better. Whether you're using the light itself, natural light and shooting creatively or changing your idea of what to shoot during that time of day, or whether you're using some post-processing tools to help enhance the image that you were able to capture during the day. And you have some excellent examples of that as well. And right. so I'm gonna pull up a couple examples from nature and we're gonna talk about some of your street portraiture. But one of the challenges of nature photographers is shooting in the middle of the day. You often have these white skies if you're in especially tropical locations, uh, or maybe those intense blue skies like what we have here in Arizona. But what do you do because the light's so harsh and the contrast is too great? You have this top-down light. What do you do? And so this particular example of an image, uh, just a different way to think about photographing wildlife during the day, I let this go almost like a high key where the feathers fade almost into the sky. It's almost overexposed. I actually spot metered on the face and then let everything go almost to that overexposed level. This was shot in the middle of the day in Florida, but it really has more of an artistic feel to it. So the next time you're photographing something that might be white on white, for example, like a bird or a gull or you know something uh, that's white or close to it, think about overexposing and letting those skies almost go to white and letting that subject take almost an ethereal feel. So it's All just right. one example. Now, was this sky, was it actually overcast this particular day or was it blue or how did you, it, um, yeah, how did you set this up? It was one of those hazy, warm days in Florida mm -hmm. where I wouldn't say there's necessarily clouds, but it's just that real hazy, soft sky, but pretty white, not an interesting blue sky. And this was shot in the middle of the day. So I'm walking around uh, one of the keys in Florida and this snowy egret let me get fairly close to it. And um, I was trying to think of something different to do, shooting it in a normal way. There was just too much contrast. So it really almost got overexposed. And you'll see that these feathers here in the back 
pretty much fade right into the sky. Normally I wouldn't do that, but this was intentional in this case. And then when you bring it into post-processing, you can play with those levels a little bit more to bring it exactly to where you want it to go. But it's just a different way to think about shooting something that otherwise would have been a very ordinary shot. Well, right, and, and the bird is what's interesting. I mean, the eyes and the beak, and you know, by making, you know, bringing the colors out in those, you know, that's really what creates uh, a lot of the contrast for the picture, and it just makes it, you know, really vivid. I mean, it's a great shot. Yeah, and you just focus on what's really important, which is this face, mm -hmm. instead of the whole bird in this case. The rest of it just kind of blends away and fades away, so it has this ethereal feel, almost like it's coming out of fog or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And I'm gonna pull up uh, a couple of other images here and I want you to talk to me a little bit about them. This is one where, and you have one coming up where it's a bright full sky. Right. And you're like, okay, here's, a, here's an interesting way to shoot this. A lot of times we're shooting flowers, you know, in, in the morning or the evening are a good time to shoot flowers as long as they're still open. This is an example where I put on a wide angle lens and I shot in the middle of the day. The flowers are still open. I've included the sun in this case in my image got down really close to these flowers and focused on them. So my camera is just a couple of inches from these flowers in a wide angle lens, but I've tilted it in such a way that I'm bringing the sun in. So instead of it just being something where you're getting harsh light, I'm actually saying, hey, here's the sun and it gives it a little bit of a different feel. So this is a late morning shot. Um, you know, the sun is too high for most things. I wouldn't want to photograph these flowers top down now because they'd be too reflective. But underneath, and you're getting this glow from the flowers, it's just a different way to think about it. Right, and this guy was probably very white and kind of blown out when you looked at it. And so it looks like you shot this pretty well stopped down to get the star pattern I and did. the sun. And uh, that affects the, the way you exposed it. You were able to bring up a lot of uh, detail in the shadows by yes. you know, getting this, this right. Yes, exactly. Shots like this shoot on a higher aperture, f8, f11, f16, mm -hmm. to get those starbursts. But then also you know, you're getting some depth in here and you're controlling and restricting that light, keeping that sky still somewhat blue. And that's not a polarizer. Some people will ask, well, do you use a polarizer in that case? This was not shot with a polarizer. This was just as is. You know, Arizona loves its blue skies, right. but uh, it was something you can do beyond the point where I can start uh, shooting top down or, you know, face level with some of these flowers. So well, and another thing is when you have a camera that has good dynamic range, if you can get any detail in the whites, when you for first look at this picture on the back of your camera, this is going to look white and maybe mm -hmm. even when you bring it into post-processing. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you shoot it in raw and then you start bringing the highlights and yes. the exposures down, that's when you can bring your blues back and then you can yeah, also yeah. use gradient filters in the light to, um, you know, bring the sky up a little bit more blue, or you can drop the luminosity of your blue in uh, Photoshop or Lightroom yes. uh, to get this darker. And then you can also pull up your oranges. And so you get exactly. that great contrast between the orange and the blue. Exactly. And one other thing that people might not realize is how much color harmony can play into popping those colors in the middle of the day. Color harmony, if you're looking at colors that are complementary or opposite on the color wheel, when you use them together, they make both of those colors pop. So things in the middle of the day, get out your color wheel. Look for colors that are opposite of one another on that color wheel. Go find one, you know, Google for one. Print one out, take it with you when you travel. Including those picture, those colors into your pictures can really make things pop in, in a unique way. So, right. so let's talk about some things that you have shot. So tell me a little bit about this one. And this was done in midday light? It is. This is high noon. This is where everybody tells you this is the death zone. So, yeah, right. <laughs> but this is the tape, uh, the same type of thing. This is uh, on uh, Lanzarot in the uh, Canary Islands, and this is pretty much strictly a volcanic island. And this is, with the exception of a golf resort and some condos, pretty much what the whole uh, island looks like. And so I was able to uh, shoot this knowing that, you know, this color was what I really wanted to capture, but I didn't want to blow out the blues because in this case, you're getting the red and the blue to create the contrast and the color. Mm -hmm. And as one of the people in the studios pointed out, um, these, this mountain range in the back looks an awful lot like Haleakala in uh, uh, Hawaii. And so yes. it, it was, and then you've got the, the rocks creating some leading lines, but mm -hmm. uh, basically you can get detail just with uh, the color. So you get a little bit more interesting shot. And when you're exposing for an image like this, tell me a little about, about your thought process going into this. Well, some people will use uh, spot metering. I kind of like to use the average metering mode because if you can get detail in the highlights and detail in the shadows, 
even though it's not going to look great on the back of your camera, once you get it into post-processing, you're going to be able to bring the highlights down enough to get your blues and the darks up enough to get uh, your reds and your greens to come up. And I know in your particular picture that that one worked out great with the bird because you were able to do spot metering right mm -hmm. on the eye because mm -hmm. those were the colors that you wanted mm -hmm. and you could get that uh, uh, ethereal sense uh, yes. of the feathers blowing back and so you didn't mind if the exposure kind of um, yes. came out. Uh, on the kind back of, on of the that, bird. Yeah, and that, right. oh, not exactly overexposed, but pretty darn close. Like that right. was a look I was okay with. And I was playing with it in the camera when I shot it. You know, you try a few different things to see what works. That was kind of the look because there wasn't much else I could do to have an interesting shot in the traditional sense when that kind of light, it would have just been very, you know, yeah. uninteresting. I know. Just... Yeah, this is nice. Could you also consider doing something like this with HDR? Um, actually, you could. I'm not really sure if it would make much difference because. Um, you might have a little bit more blue here, but um, midday, I think the colors were pretty accurate. But if you had a tripod, you could certainly shoot this HDR mm -hmm. and um, see what happens. Just get a, probably even in the hills, maybe a little bit more detail too. Sure, sure. All right, I'm going to move forward and give people another tip. Mm -hmm. This is shot right at high noon. This is uh, about, I was at probably about 9,000 feet in elevation in Colorado. There was a columbine here, and it was a beautiful flower, high noon. I never usually shoot in high noon, but I was there, you know, it was a situation. And so a trick that I like to use, and, and I tell people about it in my workshops, is to take something that's really brightly lit like this. Could be a flower, could be an animal. Typically I do this with foliage because it stands reasonably still. Uh, it gives me some time to work around it. But I'm looking at this flower, and then I'm looking at what the background is. And in this case, although it looks perfectly black. People ask me, did you shoot this in a studio? No, I shot this at about high noon, maybe one o'clock at the latest on a sunny, clear day. Uh, but what I'm looking for are dark things in the background. So if there's a tree trunk behind the flower, if, and I say behind, it can be pretty far behind, you know, multiple feet in some cases. Is there gravel? Are there dark foliage that's not being illuminated by that flower? I tend to look for the flower that's sitting right in the sun and then what's immediately behind it that somehow is in shade. And it doesn't have to be a lot of shade. It can be just a little bit, but enough so that when I zero in on the flower, this background is dark then I'm exposing for the lightest parts in that flower. And when I'm exposing properly for that, your shutter speed, your exposure is going to be something that is so high, it'll never let enough light in to the subject behind it. So that instantly goes black or very near black. You can tweak it in Photoshop if you need to or Lightroom, but the idea is you're creating this, you're using contrast to your advantage. Right. You know, we hate contrast in the middle of the day, except maybe we don't. Maybe we really love right. to use this. That's, so, that's what gives it. And you were probably exposing right on the, the yes. tip of this flower here just yes. so you had detail in it, and then you were able to bring detail up behind it. And that's then let exactly the rest of right. this just go to black. I mean, it's really a dramatic photo, and particularly, like you say, with the um, pistols of the flower coming out in the front, uh, catching most of the sunlight. Yes. And you want to make sure that you're addressing those highest, lightest parts of the flower because you don't want those to be overexposed and then you have no detail left. So I'm being very careful looking at my histogram to make sure that I'm not bumping up against the right side, that I am capturing that detail, but yet this black just appears because everything else is so much darker than what you're exposing for. So in this case, you're using contrast to your advantage. So yeah, I can't be in Colorado photographing amazing wildlife shots at noon, but you gotta right. think outside the box. How, other, how else can I capture this beautiful place and, and do so in a really unique way? Well, the other thing about this is the way you can control depth of field because you can see the point of sharpest focus is right on the edge of the uh, yes. uh, flower right here, and then it all sort of fades off into the black. So this was probably shot, I don't know, at what, four or 2.8 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I don't have the metadata with me, yeah. but it was not a, uh, it was a pretty wide open aperture, which is counterintuitive for shooting in bright light, right? Usually right. you, you want to have a smaller aperture for that, but it was not in well, this case. And a lot of people like to get full detail on the flower, but in this case, this just has a much more dramatic effect to it mm -hmm. because you know what this looks like, but you know, yeah. this is where all the light hits and this is the part that you really want to see. And exactly. this just makes the whole picture a lot more dramatic. E exactly, exactly. And this was also shot in a very windy day. So the fast shutter speed worked to my advantage there as yeah, well. Yeah, that helps, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of shimmer on those flowers and it's the dough, you know. Exactly, exactly. And this other... is a cool shot. <laughs> hey, thanks. Yeah. Um, you know, people should say, what do I do in the middle of the day? Go into the woods, go into mm -hmm. the swamp, go into places that have open shade, uh, maybe not even so open shade. See what you can get. So this was taken literally sometime around 
1 or 2 p.m. Uh, in deep in the bayous of the swamps of Louisiana. And this egret kind of poked his head around the corner as we were going by in a boat. And I just loved it because, you know, the egret isn't overexposed. Shooting a white bird in the middle of the day is usually a really tricky thing. There was some haziness to the sky, but lots of diffused light because of the canopy of the cypress. So this worked really well. Can't shoot in the middle of the day out in the open. Go into where you have some open shade. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful, you know, the, the way the bird kind of comes out, you know, it's the brightest spot in the picture. And this is something, you know, when you're shooting in the woods that you can look at midday because you get, you know, these huge columns of light that come yeah. through the trees. And where Lisa shoots in Alaska, mostly you've got um, a lot of humidity and so it's going to ref uh, refract the light. And, yes. you know, you get some really, you know, interesting light patterns coming down through there. So you, you, do. Know, you can do a lot with it. And it was quite humid that day. So that mm -hmm. humidity does help soften the light a little bit, especially yeah. in the swamp in the middle of the day. Yeah, it was quite warm. <laughs> yeah. So a little drippy here. Yeah. So um, this is not the swamps of Louisiana. Where's this? Um, this is in Havana, Cuba, and this is at a uh, boxing tournament that we were taken to um, again uh, midday. And this was kind of interesting because I had uh, my Canon and I had a uh, uh, 17 millimeter tilt shift lens and a couple others that I was taking pictures with. And I was talking to this uh, fellow that I'd met from uh, Amsterdam, and he had this just old cheap Raconan lens and he said hey I want to try this lens can you can I swap with you and so I said so I've got this little lens and I just put it straight down on the mat they wouldn't let you put your camera inside the ropes and okay. so the best way to shoot this was just to you know lay it right on the edge and come up but in this particular case you've got the high noon sun but you've got a few clouds up there so you've got your blue sky yeah. but then additionally you've got a lot of shadows um, you know from these little pieces of uh, roofing around the uh, uh, the, the boxing ring. And so when this picture first came up, and again, this is an example of trying to shoot for average light and then, you know, bringing down the highlights and bringing up the darks because these um, people in here were pretty much dark and it was really tough to see a lot of detail here and here and here. But with a camera with good dynamic range, you can bring up a lot of the detail from the shadows and then you can decrease the luminosity on some of the colors to make it a little bit more bright and vivid. And then you can still make it dark enough in certain parts of the picture so you get some visual interest as you go across the frame. It's a beautiful shot. I love it. You did a really, really nice job with that. Oh, thank you. We're about at the end of our time, so I want to be sensitive to that. But I'm going to just flash a couple more pictures so people can get an idea of some things you can do in the middle of the day. You can use a diffuser. Walk out into nature, bring this little diffuser with you. It folds up and you can hold it over you or have a friend that you're with, mm -hmm. hold it over and you can take some diffused light shots of nature, you know, whether it's the rocks or the flowers in the middle of the day, or you can use light to your advantage. Maybe you have some softer diffused light during the middle of the day, but it just allows you to do some creative things. And this is one of my favorite shots and, and I love it because it is literally the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a beautiful job of showing how you can use midday light almost to the point where you can easily see it go overexposed. You worked this a little bit in post-processing to bring up some of the shadows right. and things. It's lovely. I love the story that it tells about the streets of, was this in Cuba? This is in Cuba, yeah, and, and this was pretty much blown out. So you've got just a little bit of detail coming back in here. But um, And this is another thing where you can work with the hue and the saturation because, uh, as you and I were talking about earlier, there's usually a lot of orange in pictures that if you take it out, you can get um, more uh, distinction between the colors, which makes your picture look a little bit more interesting. And, yeah, this is just, yeah. you know, people milling around and this woman looking down the street. And It's a great tip. Yeah. Wonderful shot. Well, I appreciate your time tonight. It's well, been thanks. great to talk with you. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Lisa. Thank I enjoyed you. it. All right, Sprague. Thanks, thanks for everybody for watching. Again, we're sponsored by Photographers Adventure Club and Parkwood Studios. See you next time.